Hi, how's it going everybody? So today we're going to have a look at Open Media Vault, which is an open source NAS solution. Open Media Vault has Debian as its base and can be installed on a wide variety of hardware, including a Raspberry Pi. So you could install Open Media Vault on this and plug in a large external USB hard drive and you'll have yourself a NAS. So previously I was using this laptop here is my server with this large external 6 terabyte hard drive. As you can see, I've even got an aerial plugged into it, so I'm using this as a PVR. But this isn't ideal, as using a large external hard drive does not really provide any redundancy. But I'll continue using it as a server. So I bought this HP micro server. This is enterprise grade. It has 16 gigabytes of RAM and inside here there is a USB and micro SD card reader so I'll install the OS on a USB stick and I'm going to upgrade all the hard drives to 4 terabyte hard drives so I'll have 16 terabytes in total. So buying a used enterprise grade server will cost about the same amount as buying a new consumer grade NAS device. So buying a used enterprise grade server is probably the much better option because it'll be a lot faster than the consumer grade NAS devices. Another problem with the consumer grade NAS devices is sometimes you can't upgrade or change the firmware on them. And when the vendor chooses to stop pushing out updates for that, um, well, that's it. You don't get any more updates. So it's much better just to buy a, a used enterprise grade server and you can install FreeNAS or Open Media Vault and you'll get updates like as long as those projects keep going. Or you could build your own NAS, but I have found it's quite hard to find nice cases and trying to get ones that are nice and quiet. And I've found this HP micro server is nice and quiet and it's nice and small. So a NAS provides network attached storage within your own home or your business. It's quite useful to provide storage for your servers or the devices you have around your house. Open Media Vault comes with all the things that you'll need to set up a NAS very easily and it's very low maintenance. So Open Media Vault has this nice web interface for setting up most things. But for some more advanced things, you will have to SSH into your NAS and do those manually. So everything is quite nicely organized here to the left. So we can set up under network, we can set up uh, things like network bonding. So if you've got more than one network interface, you can speed things up by plugging Ethernet cables into both of them. Um, notifications, so you can send out email alerts whenever something might have gone wrong in your server that you should check out, like maybe a disk is getting full or a disk failed and you'll want to replace it. There's lots of monitoring tools. You can manage your Chrome jobs and all your packages, package updates. This includes not just for Open Media Vault packages, but for Debian itself. And there are lots of plugins that you can install. So if you want ZFS support, you'll have to install the ZFS plugin. Same for LVM. And I don't know if it does ButterFS. But if you're installing your OS on flash storage, such as a USB stick, you'll definitely want the Open Media Vault um, flash plugin. Also recommend adding OMV extras, which will add a lot more plugins. OMV extras will also add uh, Docker support, so that's quite cool. So as for the Docker support and OMV extras, I believe it uses Portainer for container orchestration. I haven't used Portainer, maybe that's something I'll do in another video. So, disk management's quite easy. We've got lots of options here, including power management. Now, I'm just using LVM. I'm not using ZFS or RAID. I am using mirrored logical volumes, though. However, what's really annoying is we don't get any op advanced options for LVM, like striping or mirroring so you have to actually 
SSH into um, Open Media Vault to create those mirrored volumes like this. I'm saying mirror it here. It also includes a nice interface for creating our file systems on our volumes. I might create a logical volume for swap because that swap is on flash storage, which is not ideal. That'll wear out the flash storage. And it has NFS support, FTP. You can schedule rsync jobs for backups, which is really useful. It even has uh, Samba. In my case, I'm just using NFS. By default, NFS isn't really configured that well. You'll want to do some things to speed it up, such as increasing the thread count. I don't know why it's set so low. The thing to be aware of when using something like Open Media Vault, which has a web interface for configuring and managing the whole server, is that you can't just go into slash etc and start editing files because Open Media Vault will overwrite these changes. So you have to refer to the documentation on how to make some changes, such as changing how NFS is configured. And this is the same for things like Virtual Min or Free PBX. You can't just go in and start editing things in slash etc or anything like that. So that was just a very brief look at Open Media Vault. Now I mainly just use this as a file server for my servers and mostly just use it for um, NFS. And I, I do use the rsync feature. I need to dive in more and have a look at some of the other plugins and um, features such as uh, Portainer with Docker. So maybe I'll do a video about that sometime. But yeah, Open Media Vault, um, I haven't had any problems with it. And if you're looking to set up a NAS, this might be something you want to have a look at. Anyways, see you later, everybody.